busy here, isn't it? Where are we going fishing this week? Well, it's not the Lee or the Thames, I can tell you that much. And to get there, we need to board one of those. Well, this beats fishing, doesn't it? Actually, we've got a completely different programme for you this week, and I'll let you know where we're going in a moment. Cheers. Well, some beautiful scenery down there, and in the rivers, there's some really different fish too. Have you ever heard of an eyed? Let's hope we can catch some and show them to you. Well, here we are again, and just for a change, Go Fishing's gone international. We're on a DC-9 and we're bound for Sweden, the home of 96,000 lakes and some absolutely beautiful rivers. Captain, how are we doing? Are we on time? Actually, we are a few minutes ahead of schedule. Good, good. Looks nice and bright, doesn't it? Yeah, almost the same weather in Stockholm. Oh, lovely. That's wonderful. Thanks very much. Thank you. This lovely old granite bridge here with its 12 archways is actually the, the longest bridge in Sweden. Beautiful spot here. It spans this wonderful Chlorelven River in the middle of the city of Karlstad, where there's more water than I think I've ever seen in my life before. It's one enormous delta. We just don't know where to fish. But this looks as good a spot as any. There's a lot of fast water here that I, I don't think I'd be able to fish very well with light tackle. But along the far bank, it looks like some good roach day, some bream swims, and hopefully a spot where we can catch some of those beautiful looking eyed. I'm going to give it a go there to start with anyway. It's a very bright day today. Actually, I expect to see salmon down here. The, the force of the water is that. Right, let's see what these chlorelvin fish are like. So clear, this water. It's unbelievable. Absolutely beautiful. Little tiny fish scattering all, all over the place here. I have to wade here, really, because there's too much bankside vegetation. It's no good sitting on the, the stony banks to be able to present the stick float properly. I've got to get out this far. I've already got the net and the landing net set up in that position. Let's give it a run through. I'm about, about eight feet deep at the moment. Everybody says that sweet corn's the bait, so... Let's see if they're right. Oh, it's got a lovely pace to the current. Here. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Got a diving duck in the swim too. Oh, that's a bite too. First cast, can't be bad. Corn's gone. It's a cute little fella. <laughs> Looks like a female tufted, I don't know whether it is or not. To keep my float away from you. That's beautiful. Centre pin fisherman's dream, this river, it really is. Yes, here we go, look at that. Looks like a little roach, first cast. Second cast. It's a good start anyway. <laughs> Come here. Little roach about six inches. Looks like an absolute new penny. Beautiful. Well, corn's obviously the bait. Let's bung a bit in. I don't want to go in too far here, otherwise I'm going to get a bootful. Love wading, it's, it's nice being in the water as opposed to sitting next to it. You some, somehow feel at one with everything. Down we go, down we go. I'm dragging a bot the bottom a little bit there. That's a good guess at the depth anyway. It's 
seems to shelve up just where these weed beds come up and hit the surface. It's going down a long way. Hello. <laughs> I wonder what the hell that was surface there. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not after you. Hello, we lost the bait then. Beautiful day today. Really is lovely just being here. New country, new river, new species we hope. I'm dying to catch one of those eyed that uh, body keeps telling me about. It looks as though we're going to have to get through some of these little tiny roach to do it. that one. That's lovely. I don't go too far out there because it's so fast. Another yard cast and the water's almost double the speed. It's incredible, this river, and, and I'm fishing in one of the, the slow swims. What it would be like to fish it in flood, I just don't know. It really is amazing. Oh, <laughs> missed that one. <laughs> I think I'm just touching bottom a little bit too much. I think I'm going to bring the float down a fraction. It's very difficult because when you hold back you need a longer length between hook and float and when you're trotting down normally you don't. It's, uh, I'm holding back most of the time so I've got the float very overshotted too. If I just let it swim through it would be completely out of sight. I'm trying to get that happy balance which isn't easy in very very fast water using a, a big stick really. That's lovely, that's better. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Oh, this isn't a roach. That's going well. It's not exactly fast, though. It could be a bream. God, this flow's incredible. Oh, yes, it is a bream. Not a big one. <laughs> that duck keeps coming up in the swim. <laughs> I think he's had more sweet call than the bream have had. You wouldn't believe a small bream can put up this sort of power on the rod in this current. It's un unbelievable. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> God dear me. This is lovely trotting, this is. Come on, you're only a bream. I think you're a bream, yes you are. I don't think we'll bother with the net for you, I think we'll just hand you out. Whoops. <laughs> well, he's not a monster, but uh, sure did go hard. In you go. There you are. Well, I'm starting to get into the bream now. It's funny how one minute it's all roach and then next minute it's all bream. Strange. I'm trotting too. You don't normally get bream trotting in this sort of current. Hello, here's another one. Oh no, it's a little roach. <laughs> No, it isn't. It's a little dice, nonetheless. 
Lovely little dice in this river. I bet in certain parts where the, the river forms into side streams, there's some very big dice. What I've caught so far have been a, a beautiful stamp, very thick. Lovely fish. Very little slime on these fish, particularly the bream, which is unusual. You normally associate bream with having a lot of slime on them, but of course the water's so clean and so clear that uh, they seem to be of a much darker, ooh, harder fighting, less slimier variety. I remember when we were kids and we were bream fishing on the lee and then we used to go up to the broads on holiday. If you finished the night all covered in slime, you went home as <laughs> happy as a sand boy. It's funny that, isn't it? It's uh, meant you had a good night's fishing. Holding back hard there. Oh, <laughs> we're in. That was a long way downstream. Long, long way. It feels like another bream. Perhaps they've moved a bit. It's funny, they've been coming in patches. Several bream and then the roach for 20 minutes and then... God, I'm going this flow. <laughs> it's amazing. God, you'd never believe that bream can put this sort of... Yes, it is a brave. Hold it for a minute now. It might have been an eye. It's just holding on the surface there, and I can't really do an awful lot. I want to pull the hook out. Come on. Go. <laughs> oh, he's all covered in weed now. Come on, come to Johnny. Ah, gotcha. Hello, he's got a funny. Anal fin, that anal fin. Very dark, these bream. Aren't they dark? Look at them. Completely unlike the bream we get on the broads of about this size, which is sort of whitish and very slimy. This is a completely different kettle of fish. In you go. We're in again. Now that one was further out. This shoal is really moving about here. I think it's another bream. Oh, there's that, there's that duck again. Goodness me. What a star. He pops up all over the place. I thought that was a, uh, a young tufted to start off with, but now I've seen it, I'm not so sure. It's a young something or other. I don't know what that is. Plenty of mallards about, but... Uh, that was it. Come on. Oh, he's not very big. <laughs> Incredible. It's only about a pound and a half that it should put up such a scrap like that in this in this water. They're really incredible, these fish. No doubt about it. Come out. In you go. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't catch an eye here. But uh, I don't think we've got a bad catch. I think I'm going to have to buy the crew a drink, though. Wanted an eye from this particular spot, but there's lots of other places to, to try. Oh. oh, that's not a bad catch for a couple of hours fishing, is it? More roast and bream, though.
Well, after that nice cache of roach and bream further upstream, what I've decided to do is to move down right into the middle of Karlstad itself, where we've perhaps got a better chance of a night. And I've forsaken the trotting tackle and gone on to feeder gear. Cap with a sweet corn, or I might probably try some worms, and a feeder full of corn too. It really wisps through here, so... Let's see how we do. Now I hope we're not going to get pestered completely by little roach, which is what happened further upstream. We should, hello, oh, there's a little rat tat roach as an, and another one. Looks like they're here. It's much deeper water here, so perhaps we've got a better chance of an eye than what we had upstream. We shall see. It appears that roach and dace and bream predominate in this river. With eyed the icing on the cake. And of course there's pike too and trout and in places the even the odd grayling. As there is way up river. Oh missed that one. A lot of weed down here, we should have to be careful of that if we get into something big. What I've done to let the sweet corn out of the feeder is I've hacked quite a few of the holes and made them much, much larger so that virtually as soon as it hits the bottom, the, the whole of the, the corn is deposited in a sort of an exploding way. It's probably the best way of doing it. I don't want to put too large a feeder on, so I've kept with a small one, a small one with about half an ounce of weight on it. And uh, it's, oh, it's very deep down there. It must be. 12, 15 feet deep, the way that the feeder keeps going and going and going. Perhaps we're going to do better in this deeper water. Certainly a lot of attention already, look at that. Bang, 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 little tiny roach. Plink, plink, plink. <laughs> you little devils. We've certainly got a lot of fish down there. Hello. I thought I'd left the Norfolk Broads. <laughs> I didn't realise we had pleasure boats on this river. Mind you, the only difference to this river and the Broads is that this doesn't seem to make any difference to the fishing. The water here is still beautifully pure. In fact, it's, it's too clean. It's so crystal clear. It probably makes fishing more difficult. Although there's awful, an awful lot of roach out here. There we are, look at that. Still getting lots of little tiny plinks from the roach. This river is absolutely chock a block with roach from top to bottom. I've never seen a river like it. For the match angler, it must be a wonderful place. If I went down to a 16 hook now and a, a single maggot or a single grain of corn, I think I would get a fish every single cast. I'm still trying after these eyes and I've now gone up to a size six hook, four lumps of corn, and I'm still getting plinks from the roach. It, it's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. But I've got a feeling if I keep putting in lots of bait and keep the feeder full up with corn, eventually I think we're going to get something big grab hold. Bites on the, from the small stuff aren't so quick as they were, so I think they're starting to get a little fell up, or full up. Of the... Could be a bream, could be a bream. No, it's a, is it a roach? Yes, it's another roach. Nice one too. Some better quality roach up this end. Much better quality fish. Oh, that's a chunky one. 
beautiful fish. Haven't seen some such nicely conditioned roach for a long, long time. Now that's taken five grains of corn on a size six hook, direct to five pound line. Drive most match anglers into their grave, that. <laughs> Can't fish any heavier though, surely I'll be shark fishing. That's the trouble. Go any lighter, you get uh, just a smaller stamp of roach. I'm going to keep the bait going in and uh, see if that pays off. Amazing river, this. Reminds me a little of the Middle Thames in some places, although it's much more beautiful, but uh, the size and the sedateness in places is very much like the Middle Thames. Tree line. Similar sort of width, I suppose, more than anything. A bit of a drop back there, but I'm sure that's a yeah, small roach again. Plink, plink. You've really got to chastise yourself and not try and hit these bites because they do really rattle the rod tip. Some of these bites on the Wenson would be a big old roach. Oh, there's one. Some of them would be a big old roach, and uh, you'd miss it if you waited for a, for a better bite. But uh, it's another. Another roach, I think. Yeah, small one this time. No, isn't this a dice? It's a good-sized dice. It's got a bit of a belly on it. No doubt it's full of corn. In you go. Let's put some more ground bait out there. They're obviously going to need it the way they're going. I've mixed this full of corn with some sand from the river bank as well so that it really gets down deep and fast. What I should do is keep the balls going in, perhaps every other cast a couple of balls. And what with the, the corn from the feeder, that should keep them going. On most of the rivers I fish, that would be too much bait anyway. But uh, there's, there is an enormous stock of fish here. There's no doubt about it. Seems funny catching relatively small roach and dace on a size six hook and four lumps of corn like this. It, uh, it really does. Most of the big fish I catch in Norfolk, tench, carp, chub, I catch on lighter, neater tackle. It's incredibly deep there. It's funny when you're watching a quiver tip, you, you get a little rattle and then you get a, a bang and then you might get another bite and then there's a, a lull and then you get another one and of course you tend to think that it's the, it's the same fish that, that can't make up its mind. But it isn't. It's probably a dozen different fish. One has a peck, lets it go, and then along come another couple, fight over it, nudge it. Tip does another little plink. Oh. Here's a big eyed at last. Come on, baby. Now we'll have to take it steady with this one. Ooh, careful. We've got an incredible amount of power. Just under the rod tip, you're liable to lose them. Get the net for this one. It's not a monster eye, but it's a, at least it's a nice size one. Come to Johnny, come on. Whee! <laughs> At last. Oh, well, that move from further upstream has paid off. Let's have a look at you. <laughs> at last, a beautiful eyed. 
Oh, that is magnificent. What a creature. That's well worth waiting for. Look at that. Looks like a chub. Looks a bit like a dace. A bit like a roach, but it's got these wonderful colours. In the spawning season, they grow little tubercles on their noses, just like dace and garden pond orf do. The colours of this are truly magnificent. It's well worth coming all this way for. Great.